You know, Chris, something this year that I've been really excited about is Smiling Friends coming back. Yes. And I was extremely happy with what happened on April Fool's. Um, Smiling Friends did a, uh, we thought they were going to do like a prank. Yeah. And even at that, it was like a pretty involved prank if that was what they were going to go with because they just recreated old episodes with puppets. Which mm-hmm. was novel, but not what we wanted. They had us going for a minute, though. You were pissed. I was very pissed at first. Um, but I don't know. I've just been trying to match the energy of... His name's just The Boss, the boss right? Yeah. Um, he just has this freak out at the end that is so unnecessarily oh, the new funny. Yes. Like, it is just absurd. It just, it's, it's the perfect, like, marriage of animation, timing, like, great voice work. There's something about that show in particular that Zach Hadel, the creator, one of the co-creators, says, like, these are, like, real people. They have, like, heart problems and they have trouble breathing. And there's something so funny about them, like, trying to calm him mm-hmm. down. They're like, no, no, stop, stop. <laughs> it just and so me. I just kind of wanted to kick this podcast off with the same fucking kind of energy. Yeah. You know, like, something's fucking wrong. Something's all right, right? God, it's not, it's not being right, it's not. Wasn't it? Well, not for them. Well, I don't know. I just that show knows when to cut really well. Yeah, their their timing is it's it's great, but it's also like pretty unique. Yes, and you know, I remember here like when you guys first started talking about Smiling Friends, I was like, oh, this is just the most Adult Swim looking thing I've ever seen in my life. And good lord, it it has that, mm-hmm. but it is so its own unique, cool it thing. Is, yeah. Um, I think the timing that Zach can pull off with like his breathing, there's something so funny about the characters going like, <sighs> I don't know, <laughs> it's just, it's so... Fucking De- Desmond, was that, what is that Desmond, the guy the Mike played Staclasa by Mike character. Staclasa, yeah. That was so fucking awesome, that episode, that when he finally cracks that little grin. Same with James in the new one. Yes! Oh, another great inclusion. Gwimbley's great. It's, they're knocking it out of the park and the season hasn't even started yet. Hey! Sunday night or oh, Monday, who knows? Amazing. I cannot wait for it. Whatever midnight Sunday means. I assume it's we Sunday. We were discussing that. It's a it's a tricky one because people just have the date totally wrong. Yeah. Um, Chris, it's been how many months? We did a podcast in December. December. That's right. I should have known that. Yeah. We're, we're, we're kind of on our- That was like know, our game and movie talk. Yeah. Though. Which, I mean, there could be a good bit of that. You never know. You said no. I asked. Oh. I'm sorry, but listen, Chris. I would have pushed myself further and finished the games that I was playing. Had Speaking I Speaking of games and movies, you went to the coolest place in the world. You went to fucking Japan. I did. Every gamer's dream. Chris has finally reached it. I went to uh, famed Super Potato, the store that I think Rocco Bodie and... No, I think it may be a Gersman joint. Gersman joint? Gers- oh, yeah. Gersman I knew Hunt. you were going to say that. <laughs> He has always mentioned that store, and I finally got to go there, and it lived up to the hype. There is so much weird little, like, uh, knickknacks, I'd say. Ephemera. I didn't get your Meta Knight there, actually. I got your really? Meta Knight at a uh, Don Quixote. Oh! You know those stores, right? No! <laughs> Even though I would, I was like, oh! So imagine a Walgreens stretched out to, like, ten floors, and each floor is, like, a different... It's like a department store. It's the Bucky's of Walgreens. It's, well, <laughs> it is as annoying. It is so hard to move around in there. But it's just like a Walgreens with everything you can imagine. So, yeah. yeah. It's one of those places. Well, they're represented in the Yakuza games. So Fucking wild. Yeah. That'd be pretty big if they're making it into the fucking Yakuza-verse. <laughs> well, there's a lot of brands in those games, like um, the Coffee Boss, the, that coffee that you can get in the vending machines. Oh, which yeah. Which can come out hot, by the way. Very hot. Hot vending machines. Who knew? You know, you, how you, novel. You bring up hot like dispensing things. I find it very strange that there is such access to hot water in prisons for like making ramen. That seems like a mistake. And wasn't that a plot? It was in, in the night, night of, of with the yeah. petroleum jelly. He that basically he makes, like, acid. Basically. Yeah, he, he makes fucking acid that just eats this guy's face off. And I'm just like, how does it's so, it was something like the hot water 
couldn't come off because the jelly yeah. stuck to them. Yeah, and something. so it's just stuck burning yeah. in. You know, normally you could just like fucking rub Woo. your face off, get a towel, bury it in a pillow or something. Woo. But like, yeah, I, I've just been wondering, like, is that for inmates that are just have the been good, ones? good behavior for a long time? Maybe. But I don't know. That, that but like, I, I prison stuff always interests me. Like that fact that there's commissary, they can go out and like buy cigarettes and yes! stuff. Yes. Like, economy in there. Truly incredible stuff. I hope um, I never have to really find out about hold it. Hold on, we're getting away from Jam Japan. J- 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 Japan. Japan. <laughs> um let's go to Jampan again. What what were your expectations? What were you let down by? I mean, give me give me the I long was, and I'll short tell you of this. It. The food was not good. I had such a hard time. Really? And this is not what I expected. You did not mention this. This is new to me. Every time I've traveled, so I've been out of the country a few times. I've traveled to like Germany, France, uh, Poland and Czech Republic and now Japan. Every time I've gone out of the country, I don't look up anything. I just see what looks good, and I walk mm-hmm. in, and it's usually a good experience. This was way different. This was so much harder to get good food. In fact, I had the worst sushi I've ever had in my life in Tokyo. That is so twisted. Just a big conveyor belt How sushi place. Backwards. It was like they cut the sushi with a serrated knife. Ew. It was so poorly done. That's a faux pas. And I couldn't believe it. I was very disappointed by that. But everything else... Here's, Thank- the thing about that is, like, food is usually a very important Thank part God of travel. Thank God for the global reach of 7-Eleven. Oh, my God. You were saved. Every fucking day. <laughs> Gotta get some merch. <laughs> but here's the thing. Okay, Rocco. About, like, Japan and Tokyo is I had terrible food experience, which to me is, like, a big part of travel, mm-hmm. of trying new things. It did not matter. Everything else was incredible. Was there anything the girlfriend was impressed with that you were just, like, immediately over with? She's probably not listening, but yeah, I never know. So watch your words carefully. I can't think Chris. of anything in particular, but um, no. That's no. a thing with trips. I always see how couples will like find like a big bickering point usually no. in travel. One, we had a day. So this is when I went to Super Potato. We had a day where we were like, we're gonna do our own thing today. Okay, I'm going to Super Potato. Oh, you can go wherever you nice. want. So I got to hang around Akihabara, okay. which is where all the video game stuff is. Ah. Everyone on the sidewalk is like an anime cosplayer trying to get you to sign up for something or take a picture with you. It's one of those places. You see a lot of Spider Man, a lot of like American masks. Saw Joker. I showed you the Joker. You did show me the a Joker. Looming Joker. Um, one thing I asked Chris was to always be on the eye, like keep his eye out for a Homelander. No, um, Homelander. I th- I thought that to me that's the kind of icon that like j- Japanese people, one, yes, Japanese is, people yeah. would just eat that guy yeah. up. Like I can just see it now. All these like kind of chibi, super deformed like Homelanders with like kanji all over them. It was something I wanted so badly. Not a whiff. Well, there's a mascot for everything there. Of course, it's insane. Everything has a little mascot. A construction company has something going on. There's a cute little there's a like, cute little bear guy getting something. crushed by a forklift. It's really cool. <laughs> um, but no homie, no homie. Fuck. Well. Before we move on, we haven't even talked about, about that. By the way, we. Started, I mean, there's so much to what? say. We started watching the boys after our last podcast. Well, we can't already talk about the boys. Hold on, let's keep this tidy. Japan done. Can, talk to me about the the military man. I want this on this channel as a record forever. <laughs> he might be the thumbnail. Oh, I can crop him out. Oh, you could. There was a. Um, oh, that's such a good idea. There was a little Norwegian coffee shop called like. Flugen, Fuglen, something mm-hmm. like that. It's pretty famous in Europe and apparently Japan. But anyway, it's where all the white people gather. Mm. But every day. You're one of them. Every day, sitting outside of this coffee shop in his own little reserve spot is a man dressed to the nines in full military garb. But it's not Japanese military garb. The first day I saw him, he was wearing a full American like Army Air Corps, like World War II pre-Air Why? Force military uniform. And he was saluting police officers as they walked by. Second day, he was wearing more like Imperial Japan stuff, but he just sat there with his legs crossed and drank his coffee. Just watching people, just waving at the authorities. It's so bizarre. I got, and a, got a pick of him. You made a really great point that I hadn't considered because I'm extremely American, where you were like, he's an outlier there. This is not just like a normal no, Japanese no, no, no. thing. In my mind, this is like a thing already. This is an, a cultural institution. It was like... He felt like one of those New York guys that's like a living statue. Like oh. He just was part of the set piece or something. <laughs> it was so bizarre, but he might be. Hey, that, that, there may be something deeper to it. They may be paying him. Maybe there. he's just to attract attention. 
got you mine. Know, I mean, this guy is so strange. And also, the thing where you're like having to take pictures of these people covertly <laughs> is my favorite thing to picture you doing. Just like you know, like we have the funny Walmart Tony Soprano shirt where he's shooting, yeah, yeah. holding up the gun. I picture you like holding up your phone, kind of like no, that. No, what I do is hold up my phone normally upside down and walk with it, and just <laughs> I hit the button just like 50 times to capture like as many photos as possible. Fucking awesome. Do you ever like try to do a video, or is that too risky for like motion blur? Well, video would work too, I guess. Yeah, because um, you could always get a screenshot. Thing about that. photos, you do run the risk of having your flash on on accident. That's very true. You've seen that picture yeah. of Chloe Grace Moretz where she's oh, like looking directly into the camera. The fucking food. That one yes. Hurts. Man, what happened to her? I don't know. She was like huge for a while, and this kind of. <laughs> You're gonna say she was a cutie. No. Oh, it's kind of weird looking. <laughs> what is going, what's going on here? <laughs> I don't know. I, I I learned of her when she was a child, and so that's weird <laughs> to talk about now. Fair enough. That Drake all... might have something to say about it. Oh <laughs> God! You already want to get over that. You want to yeah, talk let's about get that. over it. Why don't you travel? Um, because I'm the worst homebody you've ever met, and I think terrible things are going to happen all the time to but me. But do you not like one day want to go somewhere just completely foreign to you? Just fish out of water. Here's the problem. See what it's like. like I'm cool for like a couple days, but then it, I just get this overwhelming. Like I need to be home. I need like even if I have like let's say a really nice. Sorry, scrambles is oh. cutting up over there. Um, even if I have a really nice hotel that's like nicer than where I sleep. You know. Yeah. It's just not the same. And I have I have so many things, and I am married to my things. Yeah. Deeply so. You're the type of guy that doesn't keep a lot of possessions, and you could just cut and go whenever. Well, We're very so fundamentally different in that regard. You think that about me, but I'm also like, I have to have a home base. I mm-hmm. don't like the idea like, I'm going to be moving in a, in a year or something. I can't have that in my head. I have to think like, this is my space. You yes. Know? I, can't, I can't be up in the air. Hmm. So. Hey, this is sort of a home base of sorts. It is. Your southern nice home base. It's nice and to know. I, I, I got to say, it. this guy is so funny. Um, I told a few people that you were coming that know like a little bit about you. You know, like my parents, a few coworkers, and some of the guys in like the the fucking the work Discord. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if he's like his parents even know. And they're like, Yeah, I bet he didn't even tell his parents he's what? coming down what? there. I mean, he's that much of a chicken shit. <laughs> Who, what Did, do you say okay, about tell, me? So tell me the truth. Wait, what do you say about me? Why would they think Did, I'm a like, chicken you shit? Just, you just come and go and don't tell your parents of your travels. But what does this have to do with your mm. work friends? Friends. Well, I don't know. Like they, They've they heard of tales of Chris for years. And I just brought up that you were coming to Ronnie at work. And he just goes, I bet he didn't even tell his parents. What? I don't even know him. I. But he knows a little about you. I mean, I'm not telling them like, what are you all telling? your business. But this is like this is kind of like how I do horrible things. Like I just tell people that don't even know Jesus that he doesn't know that John Lennon was assassinated. What was your response to him saying that? Where you're like, yeah, you're probably. I was right. like, I bet you're totally what right. The fuck? I bet that guy didn't even tell his parents he's going to be like a state over suddenly. What? <laughs> have we found a rift already? Is this? I just this don't early understand in the night? why they would think that. What have you done? What have you told them? I don't know. It's just so funny that Ronnie said that. And I was just to be like, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I guarantee you he didn't even tell his parents he'd be so close to them. I don't even care. Uh, just, I don't know, where, I don't know. how a, this could happen. There's a certain mythology that I like to spin with people that don't even know you. Like, I'm not, like, saying, like, you, like, eat yeah. babies and stuff. What? Like, it's not, like, that bad. Well, but I don't know. I feel like everyone, to an extent, when they're... Like, when you make a drastic move or something and you meet a new set of people, you can kind of embellish a little bit about the people back from where you used to yeah. be. And I think it falls into that category. Yeah. Don't read it, do it too much. It's just I don't care. Fun. It's just funny. It's just stupid. Who, who do, why? Hey, it's just a thing. It's just a cute little thing I do. That's a nice, it's nice a little, little joker thing. trick. It's a little, little trick. joker trick. Speaking of moving, Daniel has moved to Chicago. Yeah, he's right down the street. This is the first this has been discussed here in this space. First time he's ever been out of Texas. And Living. He, I mean. he loves riding those scooters to buy drugs. Legally. Legal drugs. Well, as far as we know. Yeah. He got his green card. Ah. <laughs> That's so fucked up. Um, yeah, he seems like he's head over heels, which I knew he would be. Um, I think he... Um, I shouldn't talk for him. Nah. But you guys are like attached at the hip. You could talk for the guy. Come I, on. I think it's good that he has just a total different change, like a total change of scenery. Couldn't mm-hmm. be any more different. So I'm sure they're, they're they're probably feeling like they're on vacation still. In the honeymoon phase, yeah. maybe. Yeah. I feel like he had gotten sick of Houston for a long time. Do you think Jesus, um, no. if he really wanted it, could make it happen? 
This, I don't think he wants to move, is the thing. Like, he's one of those guys that's like... Well, he always says his parents are there, and he has a kid. Ah, uh, so that's right. He lives next door to his parents. I always forget that. Yeah. That, well, that's crazy. I think he's pretty much tied down, as far as yeah. I know. I could be wrong, but that seems to be the general consensus. I don't know. Like, crime in Houston is... It's bad, but I don't think it's any worse than most of the places that we live. You no. Know? Chicago, the side you're on, non-existent, pretty much. Pretty much. And... uh Houston, in a lot of ways, is like a bigger version of where I live, even though where I live is a lot more run down and fucking, fucking strange. Well, yeah, the thing about here is um, there's not a lot of upside to it. Like, yeah. I think you have the same bad parts of Houston that you do have here, but like Houston has a higher ceiling. You yes, know what I mean? Exactly. So. Yeah, and it's so funny, just the sheer number of people I hear that live um, where I live, which continues to be unnamed, they're just like, yeah, I really want to get out, but I just can't. I just, I, everyone is pretty much in agreement. There's no, I don't think there's anyone or almost hardly any group of people that are like, yeah, it's awesome. It's fucking awesome here. And just, I mean, just, it's just like everyone's stuck. It's so I've strange. said that about this place for a while. Yeah. It feels like a little black hole, kind of. It is. <laughs> um, This is great. There's so much. There's so much. There's so so much tea. Oh, so much tea stop to discuss. Stop it, Ethan Klein. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Get the I've fuck been out of here. I've been bemoaning how um, I'm not. These guys, the other guys in our <sighs> our little friend group here, they have long since abandoned H3. If they were ever even into it, really much. I mean, I think I think you. Sorry, there are. Did I just make myself gag? There are a lot of hamster fumes in this room. It might have been my fumes. It could have been. It could have been. Um. That pork almost made me throw up. I think that's what it was. Like, I had so the it's pork, just coming up. pork burp. Well, if, if you burp soon and you hear a... You know, you know what happened. Well, um, gosh, this is such a, tif- a difficult podcast because I'm like at the crossroads of 40 different conversations. And Ethan I'm, Klein. I'm trying um, to... We, we watched H3 like in 2016. Yeah, and this was back when he was just doing like his public pranks. I feel like uh, the big thing that of that era when we were watching him regularly was a Vape Nation thing. Mm-hmm. And that it, was... It was at a head. That's that, where that it That was where it was And everything has been going downhill. Yeah. But I mean, honestly, for him as a... As someone who does what he does for a living, I'm sure this is a much more comfortable... Of course. Like you just structured part of, part of like your this. life. And I I can totally get why, you know, he discussed it. The guys from Mega64 have discussed it. It's always been difficult to do public, like, reaction stuff. But the current day and age, it's just doubled down on how much more dangerous and difficult that is. And how crazy people are and pandemics. And so, you know... Never mind. It seems like a <laughs> it seems like a natural progression, but my problem is, I do still keep up with the guy. I can't help it. I was telling why. What brings you to him? I cannot. Is it because he spills the tea? No. Shut the fuck. Suck and fuck. <laughs> shuck and fuck. Suck and fuck. Shuck and fuck up. Suck. I cannot help but like the guy, why? even when he's fucking up. There's something about Ethan Klein. That I find very interesting and silly. Intoxicating? And, no. Oh. A, a brand like no other. Pretty. And yes, a beautiful, <laughs> a beautiful young Jewish man. Not that young. I'm into Jewish people very much. And that, you know, well, yeah, he is like 37 or 38 now, I think. He, he looks terrible. He's my, he's my sister's age. Well, he's gone completely gray. Almost, and you know, he's I've got old. a, I got a lot of grays on my uh, sides and my temple like mm. areas. But I don't know. I, my my problem is. This is the point I made on Discord, uh, which I will say a lot tonight. If it was just him talking like Jeff Gersman, which I don't think he has the skill set to do, I think no, he needs ideas. Not, well, not people many to, people do. To, exactly. Jeff Gersman could just talk for like 16 hours and be riveting. It's remarkable. I actually would like to see how many hours per week of like just solo videos he does. Like how many hours talking he has per week. Well, he does like th- a handful, like three or four, like two hour shows. Yeah. So it must be like over 10 yeah just really good at it but like that's what i wish ethan klein could do if he was doing a podcast but he surrounded himself with a really good crew like they are they're great they're all professionals they're really fucking awesome it's just a few of them seem like they have more influence than they should Mm. and seem like they're running the show and they dictate what ethan talks about it was my burps uh i I, well you could have 
let it fall in the hamsters, Chris. You know, you had the perfect opportunity. But I appreciate you being honest and humble. That's what I've always liked about you. We both had the same pork. Yes, we. Well, I didn't actually swallow it. I took one bite. You told me you did. And started chewing it, and I threw it up. You told me you swallowed. I did not swallow that pork. Why did I swallow? That it? pork did not slide down delicately my throat. Well, I wouldn't have swallowed it if you. You swallowed all the pork. I porked you out. Okay, this is getting very strange. Um, okay, this is not an H3 retrospective, but I do want to say, like, I'm just mad about stuff like, if he just found things organically to respond sure. to, like he and Elo used to do back in the day, it'd be a great show still, probably. You know, yeah, he'd, he'd talk about politics and say stupid shit and have horrible takes, but it's the people that keep feeding him, you need to talk about this teeny bopper gossip. Right, right. You need this to talk about on Ace Family. You need to talk about FaZe Clan. Well... You when, talk when about it comes James to, Charles. When it comes to things like that, and then you're just commenting on like the hottest thing, it becomes obligatory, and there's nothing behind it. And he's not like a wordsmith anyway, so having him talk about all these things that he really doesn't know much about is kind of like it's not. But I mean, he well. has like an army of staff. It's fucking crazy. He like, he's got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people working on set for the podcast. A guy that's just spamming drops, that like plays guitar like a wizard, fucking producers left and right. But the problem, my biggest problem is there is a girl named Olivia who is good at what she does. I just don't think she fits in this brand. And she's the, she's like the, just the most ya slay queen. Fuck and that's her whole personality. And so you have podcast Shh, titles like head. Ethan just had his third kid, um, or Ela did. And <laughs> there was like a huge break, and they come back, and there's like this. M- monolithic six hour podcast and it's just called catching up on all the tea Fuck off, and then it no. has like a painting yeah, nails yeah, yeah. emoji that is brand buffoonery what are we doing but I, you know i i was thinking the other day and it, it falls into this kind of thing the like the yes yeah, slay whatever shit there is like this kind of i don't know if it's a post-pandemic thing but there is like a wave of like over the top positivity and self-image oh yeah that it's like it's not really bordering. It's just gone on to full arrogance and cockiness. Yeah. Like the, I I don't care. I'm too good. And that's like accepted now. It's like a, oh, slay. Well, uh, fuck off. You're being an asshole. Well, that, I mean, I'm not trying to get into like a debate about feminism, you know. Oh, because no. that's what it is. But like so many of the people who do say like the Yah slay queen and, and fierce and all that, the whole Rihanna jokes I used to do, like it's not the content of what they're saying. It's the fact that they're using these buzzwords. That may as well have little. You like, might as well be a hashtag. Little trademark symbols yeah. next to each yeah, of them. Yeah. Like, make some new ones. These phrases have been around for like fifteen years. Plus, like Chipotle is using it in their ads. Oh, like, you got to get a. When that get over happens, it it's, it's like over. when it's like when your band song gets is, is, is being played in a grocery store. Yeah. That's officially a dead product yeah. now. Or like when Fun had their song in that Kia commercial. Oh my god, I had no fun with that. Ugh, it's so ironic they were called that. Okay, we're moving along. Well, let's, speaking of moving along, let's have the big boys talk finally. All right. Well, no, it doesn't have to be that big. Well, I'm not talking like 45 minutes. Okay. I just want. I already talked to your mom about it. I'm a little Oh my out. God, I missed that. I'm burnt out. You talked to mom about yeah, that? I don't want to talk about it. You seriously talked to her about the little boys? A little bit, yeah. She said what she liked it. What are you talking about? She likes it. Did she bring up the violence? No, she likes it. She said she likes it. You're pulling my legs. Oh, no, no, no. Something's weird. You're pulling my pork. Well, f- for fucking with me here, I'm going to say that you dropped the the bombshell. Uh, Daniel, he likes it. He just likes the show. Dislikes? He just likes it. Oh, I don't know. He's, Ask him. Call, you want me to call him? Yeah, call him right now. No. Um, I was going to. I don't know. I wasn't like expecting everyone to be like head over heels because it's really, uh, like I said, it's it's the best trash TV. It's prestige, I, yep. awesome t- trash TV. Would it? Does it upset you that I look at that and I'm like, I'm just have, I'm having fun. I'm not like well, super. No, I'm engaged. not like expecting you to be like super invested in okay. the character drama. You'd be a fucking idiot for that. Uh, I'm having fun because I'm watching this with you guys, and we're just kind of like, you know, along for the ride. Kind of like Fallout, which we don't have to talk. about. I got into the boys. When I had to take a very long, uh, I needed to take a like a, a drinking break because I got a little out of hand. And when you've been doing that for a very long time, and you suddenly don't have that warm, cozy friend, and the nights are getting late, I needed something. And you just burned through it. I shredded through that show. I was watching like five episodes a night. I would get home from work so excited. Nothing has excited me that much. Like, we watched so many good shows over the year. Better Call Saul. 
dark, fucking Ozark, you name it. But none of them was I just like, this is a page turner. I can't stop. I have to know what happens next. Something about that crude, stupid show has its hooks in me so deep. I know. And it's like candy, and I can't stop gobbling it up. And the very fact that this, a show by Eric Kripke, oh. I liked Supernatural in like, what, 10th, 11th? It was, it was after I met Nick and Jeremy. The Italian man. Yes. The men. And the, yes, the men. Sequel to The Boys. Oh, they would never. Do and that. I got so burnt out on that show because I started just, it took me a while to realize Supernatural is like a UPN show. It's a CW show. Yeah. And it's just cheap and shitty and the technology wasn't there. And we talked about how if The Boys was done in like, when did Supernatural start? 2005, I think. If it started in 2005, it'd probably be a show we made fun of. I can see talk it. about it, like, like Smallville or something. Yeah, because the fucking technology to bring this kind of vision to life just was not there. It's the whole thing I always talk about with like in Supernatural. Oh, you've got all these creatures. Dude, this episode deals with dragons. And yeah, it's a guy. It's, it's a guy, yeah. It's a guy whose head will occasionally turn into a CGI like dragon head. I can't believe they even did that. I it, yeah. it's like isn't like the final boss like God and he's just a dude? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well he's not the final boss, but he just turns out to be like a, a dipshit. Oh. Um but yeah, so Eric Kripke went on to make The Boys, and I just didn't know he had it in him. Obviously, it's adapted from the uh Yeah, but the Garth source Innes. material is like not that the like, source material integral to the quality. The thing about the boys is, you remember, you know, we watched Hero Gasm last night, which is arguably one of the best episodes of the sh- whole show. And you know, Homelander. Big spoilers ahead. Big spoilers for the boys. No one is listening to this that has not watched that. I don't think. Um, like Homelander, this superhero, this Superman evil analog, just like land somewhere and just happens to step on a like a, a shrink like a man that can shrink down to the size of like an ant oh it's so mean-spirited it's yes and that's the line it's just like it if it did not have these these moments of heart like with kimiko and frenchy and you know mm and his daughter and meaningful stuff with mave it would just be so shitty like as funny and fun like fun as it is it, what, what I'm saying is it walks a tightrope that I can't wrap my head around. How it can be compelling in these different ways while also being just trash TV. Just gross. Just, we're going to show somebody's head, like half of their head exploded and they're still alive and like trying to talk and you're looking at the roof of their mouth. And it's just like the next scene, it's like, I'm so touched. I'm so like captivated by this character drama. And there's a fucking Superman that has like narcissism and self-esteem issues and he's the best part of the whole fucking show what is homelander why is it so good why is it, tell me why it's so good chris he's a fucking maga analog i think the thing about the way anthony star portrays homelander is he is like nearly unbreakable even like in spirit for most of the time he's on screen and then sometimes we get a little little flash where Cracks he's like around the edges yeah and last night's episode it's where he looked like he, he looked scared for the first, first time, time he looked like he had met his match and that's so funny you say that because there's a character that says and that i was like episode. i was a little stirred by that i was like oh yeah this is like affecting me in a way exactly. i didn't think it was gonna happen i just have such a good time with that character and like many people have said about the show you will hate him you won't agree with anything but he, he has to but be there. You love him. Yeah, of course. Like, he is so captivating. And intoxicating. Yes. I, I'll say it. it. Anthony Starr is home better. Intoxicating. Yeah. I showed Chris a little bit of um, Banshee last night, which is the show he uh, was on before. It was pretty much his first really big break because, I mean, he'd been in all kinds of stuff. He was in Xena Warrior Princess in the late 90s. Oh. And, um, you know, it's it's like, it's a show that has only two beats. It's like Mission Impossible or just, like, a sex. hardcore sex scene. First, like, 30 seconds. Yeah. Just, like, well, as the episodes go on, it's just, like, full frontal nudity, like, pussies, penises shown. It's wild. He was doing, like, the Susan Sarandon creature oh, of the yeah. night thing. Oh, yeah. Ah. I, I, that was a lot. It was a lot. Huh. Lucky guy. He had a handful. Oh, bit two of them. Oh. But, uh, yeah, so, I don't know. The boys, like, I, I didn't know what to, th- I was so scared to show it to you guys. What do you think I'm going to do? Hurt you over it? No, like, it's come just, over and be like, ah, that's... we put shows and like what we're into on such a pedestal. Oh, and this was like okay. nothing I've ever seen shown you guys before. I have something to say about that. And um, the whole pedestal thing. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how active you are on X anymore, but I never I post, but I recently always said something along the lines of 
I don't know if things are like really like movies and games have been just really good lately. It's ridiculous. Or have I let my guard down and enjoyed things more without say... having to without having to take something meaningful out of it all the time and just enjoying the moment? I think it's the latter. I think it's a mix of both. I, I think, think I've it's let my mix, guard down a lot. But I think the mix is like 80% mass media has gotten, well, outside of music, has gotten so much better. Like, aggressively better. But you know, one thing I'm... 20% I'm, you've let your, you but know, what I'm trying to say prima is like, donna stuff 2015 me would not watch Big Trouble in Little China. True, I true. would think it was stupid. I wouldn't get it. Well, it is stupid. It is stupid, it's part of the, the joy point. of it. Yeah. But it plays itself straight, you know? That's, that's when camp works for me. Another th- trend uh, that comes along with all these great shows and the hour-long program. You do not like the hour-long TV it's format. I think like 42, 42 to, to 45 minute shows, Chris does not have an issue. But once you get over that 50 minute mark, it's like Chris starts to sweat. I gotta go. I gotta get out of here. I gotta. This is just too much. And it's like when you sit down with a movie, it's like this is a movie. I get it. It's going to be an hour and a half long, at least. But there's something about a show. I don't mind it. In fact, I, I love longer shows like that. Well, I, I think it's mostly because usually our viewings are kind of like fly by night. Like, oh, let's hop on for the boys. Yeah, and especially just ends on Discord. up being so long sometimes. But that's my thing about the boys. It's one of the few shows where like it'll be like an hour and two minutes. That episode last night flew I by. I start it, and then it's over yeah. already. I'm like, are you kidding me? I thought where we did the like, time go? I thought we were at the midway point when mm-hmm. credits rolled, and we sunk like an hour and It was just a really minutes. compelling episode. Um... Well, we should probably move on from the boys. I love the hell out of it, but I would never call it a great show. It's just great fun. Okay. Um, we okay. So there's a lot of anniversaries going on. When does Chris turn thirty? When does Chris join the thirty club? After you. <laughs> how how does Chris feel about the thirties barreling towards him uh, at breakneck pace? It's scary, honestly. It is really you a know, big step. I think there have been some things that have helped me along the way with like kind of coming to a reckoning and like knowing what I'm going to feel that when that happens, which is coming in less than a year. Woo-hoo! But I have a coworker, Sean, who is 31, mm-hmm. I believe, 32. Same age as me, 31. 31 or 32, and he just has the same mind as me, and he acts like a child like I do, and it just makes it gives me a little hope, you know? And I've found that recently when I find like a YouTube channel that I like and I found I find out they're 29, 30. I'm it's like, like, yes. Oh, these I can guys still are, do it. These guys are over the we hump. Can, we can still be stupid children, exactly. you know, which is all I want to be. So, Well, speaking of 30, something wild happened. Um, Space Ghost Coast to Coast turned 30. That's a big deal for me. I love that show. It's horrible. It's one of the worst fucking pieces of trash ever, but it was one of the first introductions I had to Adult Swim. In fact, it actually predated Adult Swim. In fact, it was one of the building. On? Oh, man. They had some kind of, I think it was What a Cartoon? Oh. They had a sort of like adult, like. Adult Swim did not exist, but William Street was trying to figure out, like working with Comedy, oh, Comedy Central, with Cartoon Network. They realized they wanted to test out an adult format. And I think they were flirt they had been flirting with the idea for a long time. And Space Goes Coast to Coast, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and something else did predate Adult Swim, but they sort of led to it being created. And so it was a really landmark show. And another amazing thing about it is I have on this trip, I have kept saying, Don't you just want to put on an episode of the original Scooby Doo? And I have to always remind myself, Chris has no fondness for the shittiness. The shitty warmth of Hanna Barbera. I, I watched Scooby Doo when I was a kid. I just don't. I, I don't there, want to see it. There is something about Hanna Barbera. They were such a cheap company, but they remind me of you know we we watched a, good, a little bit of uh, Gentleman Broncos last night. Oh my um, God. Because I think there was an anniversary. <laughs> yeah, it was the what twenty year anniversary for Napoleon Dynamite yep. either this year or last year. Which insane that that movie took off. Like really looking back on that, how? How well, that's always that been the amazing. It was a runaway success. That's a, that's a true phenomenon. That kind of stuff does not happen very often because I think that movie cost like five hundred grand, something like that, and it made like over a hundred million. Oh yeah, that's one. Everybody of, saw it. That's one of the wildest fucking stories ever. And I mean, it was barely made. Like 
the people in whatever town they filmed it in were like in Idaho. Yeah, they were feeding the crew because they they were foregoing food to spend money on the film. It was so crazy. And so, what's that guy's name? It's it's like Joel something, the director. Jared Hess? Jared Hess. Wow, I was way off. Good job. Um, Jared Hess. And so, you know, I I went on a little retrospective. I I, I rewatched Napoleon Dynamite. You know, I came There's around. There's still some moments. There are some moments, like the the, the chickens have, have like large talons. Large talons. I like the way the ch- the, uh, the milk tasters, I think they are. Oh, they, yes! They just unintelligibly <laughs> just, I should battle, go back on the community show, man. <laughs> Whoa, it it just. I have been myself for a, a long time, all the way back to childhood, and when Napoleon Dynamite was huge, I hated it. Of course, you did because it was just in every hallway, just vote for Pedro or oh, calling people fat lards, tater tots, fat lards, and I hated it. And you know, a few years later with Joseph, we just went back and we were like, "Oh, this is just great. This is just awesome." And I hadn't watched Nacho Libre in a while, and I remember Joseph, I think he genuinely liked Gentleman Broncos. Um, I was entertained by Gentleman Broncos. I didn't like it. So I just had this well, whole, like, Joel Hess retrospective. Jared. Why can't I tell him? I don't know. Why do I want to call him Joel? Stop. Ugh. But it's interesting to look at the trajectory of his career, because it was like, you make a movie like that, suddenly you're hot shit. That's, that's the tough part. Everybody wants this guy. Everybody wants to like give him ideas. What's the next Napoleon Dynamite? But uh, but Napoleon Dynamite is lightning in a bottle. 100%. That guy could not do that could again if he tried. never strike twice. It, he, if he had all, all the same resources and everything, he could not it do it It was the again. perfect storm. Absolutely. Everything about the it. The fact that it was in theaters everywhere. Well, Nacho Libre did pretty well. But Nacho Libre is not on the same caliber I don't, as like little no, homemade indie no. shit. No, I, I don't. Was a Jer- uh, Jared Black. Yeah, see, we're both doing it. A Jack Black joint. Yeah, Jack Black joint. JBJ. Um, uh, I I feel like about Jack Black that I f- like the way I feel about fucking Dave Grawl. Like, just tired I kind of don't him. like him because a lot of people I don't like liked him. Yeah, but I uh, then I have to like constantly remi- remind myself, hey, dude. That was 20 years ago. You didn't like those people 20 years ago. Get over it. Like, it's not the movie's fault. You're letting your guard down. And so I watched Nacho Libre again. It has some moments. It has its moments. Not as many as Napoleon Dynamite. But then you have Gentleman Broncos, which is this, like, I like the idea of a loving nod towards, like, pulp science fiction from, like, the 70s and 80s. That's just such a good feeling thing to me. like, 50s and 60s. Oh, man, like Gene Roddenberry stuff? Or even further back, like, uh, what's his name from the Church of Scientology? Oh, I don't even know. L. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron. Hoya Bimbe. And, (laughs) and, um, like, I, I read a lot of, like, pulpy, like, 70s science fiction novels that my dad had. And uh, I, I don't know. It, it's just, it's a very niche thing. And I don't know. Gentleman Broncos is worth checking out like 20 minutes. I can of. tell he put heart into it. And there was a great execute. vision. Yeah. But it was full of like poop jokes yeah. and fart humor. Like there's a little bit of that in Napoleon Dynamite, but it's like they turned the spigot of shit on. For and you got movie. Jermaine Clement doing his best Tim Doing his best. Ooh. I gotta tune up my Nigel Thorne. I was gonna say Alan Cumming. It's Alan Rickman. Alan R- Alan Rickman. No, it's Tim Curry. I know, but your Snape voice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Harry. <laughs> Smashing. <laughs> um, I just love that Tim Curry got cast as Hexus in fucking uh uh what a Fern name. Gully. What a wicked fucking name. what a wicked villain. Oh, Hexus. So yeah, I, I've just had the those those Hess movies in my mind lately. Um, Space Ghost is great. It's it's a it's a time capsule. All of it, all the early Adult Swim stuff is such a time capsule, and it's just wild to see it get so old, so fucking old. Want to touch on something about you know we're not getting back into the boys, but we watched Fallout. Oh yeah, we did. Even though I remember about half of it because I was going through a little drinking phase with it. So I want to ask you this about Fallout. You've never played the games. Never. You're not really exposed to anything in the games. You kept, right. Like, you don't really know what yes. Vault Boy is. I, I, I know the images. Right. That's it. But you don't know, like, what he applies to no. or anything. I had Do no you clue. think that was good or bad for you, for your viewing experience? <laughs> oh! My vape! <laughs> my vape! Well, 
Well, going into it, I felt like proud of myself. I'm going to go into this blind. I'm going to be able to take this at face value. I'm not going to have any expectations, any hopes or dreams that like you guys had. And I still, it was fine. It was good. I don't know. I wasn't taken with it, really. Like I, I don't I know if been. I would say I was taken with it at any point, but I was it very was fun. pleasantly surprised at how good of a time I was having. I think a lot of it just kind of fell flat for me. Sure. And I wonder if I was like you and have played the games, would I appreciate it a little more? Like all the nods, all the Easter, the Easter eggs, eggs yeah. all the, oh, is this the Brotherhood of such and such? Oh, they're going to lead into that. Oh, it is that. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, is that that character? Oh, dude, they're totally, that's him. Yes, yes. I have and, none and, of that. Well, the fact that you see Las Vegas at the end yes! of it was like a big fan, you know, fan service moment. And you know, as much as I like to see, we're getting into spoilers here, Kyle McLaughlin, he was barely in it. Thought he was great in the first episode. Yeah. Where his character ended up, not a fan. I'm, I don't like that either. That I, was not good for me. I like happy, joyful, jubilant Kyle, and that's not what I got. It turned into cynical, dark Kyle. Duper, even. which it, Worse than Duper. He du- wasn't it, as cool as Duper. He, no. I, it, was, it left a very bad taste in my mouth, that ending. I just, I don't know. And everybody was so taken uh, taken with this, uh, what's her name, Purnell. Oh. She was good. I thought she was pretty she good. She was good. She played that bright-eyed dimwit that has no idea what they're doing. She was playing like the cute, like okie dokie. Yeah, but it wasn't overbearing. I thought Mm-mm. that that's like a hard balance to strike because that could have been annoying as hell. And the casting is definitely a part of why that wasn't annoying. Yeah, and you know Walton Goggins, who he's awesome. I don't know if we've discussed this, but like you know. Chris's first exposure to that was the first, the pilot of Justified. And to we, Walton? Yeah. No, it's not. I, I keep telling you this. I can't believe you're such a fan of Mr. Goggins and you haven't seen Hateful Eight. I still haven't watched oh it. Oh my God. He is like a main character. Well. And he's awesome in it. My whole point was it was kind of a, a joke when we watched that episode and it became. Well, it was on a lark because it was it had Timothy Oliphant and we yeah. just finished Deadwood. And I ended up loving Justified by the end. But yeah, <laughs> like, watch a second after the first that. like five. The first season is really rough, but it grows into a really good show. I mean, it's no great. Should show. I watch it? No, okay, <laughs> you wouldn't like it. Okay. Uh, cool. It's too old TV. It it, it it has kind of the trappings of an 80s show in how it... Is it a monster of the week kind of thing? No, it's a, it's very, like, character arc based and, like, villain arcs for entire seasons, you know, that are usually picked off by the end. But it turned into a great show, but I do think it's a little too... You wouldn't... You would like it, but I think you just get bored after a certain point and annoyed by a lot of, like, characters. But it's a good show. And... So anyway, I was very excited for Walton in this. And I remember when we were watching the first episode, I was head over heels loving it. Every scene he was in. But then over over time as the season went on, I really didn't care for he, you know, he plays the ghoul. His his real name is given in the like in the beginning, but no one calls him that in the future. Um but I kind of grew sour on really? that character. I I felt like it was a real one trick pony. It was predictable. I mean, he that's an archetype for but sure, the gunslinger that's just so badass no one can touch him. As yeah. the the flashbacks continued of where he looked human, every time that was back I was just so relieved. I was like, I love seeing this character. I like that character. I don't uh, like well, the ghoul. If they do it right, they'll tie the two disparate parts of his personality yes. together. And which so, they haven't yet. The ghoul is like its own thing. Here's here's like my c- concluding point on it, if I watched Breaking Bad as it was airing, I watched that first season, I would be like, that was mid as hell. <laughs> it's like, yeah, the part with the bike lock, you know, that was kind of cool. And that first episode sure was crazy. But I probably would have, looking forward, been like, I don't know if I'm going to pick this back up. And I think that was how it was for a lot of people. And you know what? That's how I felt about Better Call Saul. Oh, I love Better Call Saul from start to finish. Really? Even that first like episode love with the skateboarders it. and everything? Love, I just felt love, it, it, love it. Maybe I should rewatch that. I think you need to get through the first season of that show for sure before you really start even considering what it is. Like, it's a similar trajectory to Breaking Bad. Yeah. Like, it, it, 
It knew when it wanted to be better than Breaking Bad did. By the end, it had its own thing going. The Absolutely. last couple seasons, whole different show. Yeah. I enjoyed the whole ride profusely. I think that show gave its characters so much more dimension than Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad is just like, after a certain point, this we have talked about Breaking Bad to death, but it, it is just like this outrageous action drama. Well, let's, you know. Walt is the, like a superhero. We had that podcast a long time ago with art where he's like you know walt's gonna do some badass thing right now it's not even in question to me better call saul felt a lot more grounded Mm -hmm. and very even like i said it had so much room to breathe and work with its characters where with breaking bad especially by the time you get to like the end of season two it's like we're trucking we are running full vault that's the thing with breaking bad is i always assumed it would kind of settle in and it never settles mm-hmm. in. It is like breakneck the whole time. So in a way, as a companion piece, it's it's to me, Better Call Saul is so necessary. It is so perfect. What an excellent mirror of Breaking Bad. It's to me a much more mature product overall, even if it is a little more dull, especially in those early seasons where it's like I skipped those. It's like what I just are we doing? The talking um, but I I started rewatching it a few months ago. Fucking awesome. Love that first season. Hmm. I don't love the first season of Breaking Bad. I really kind of dislike the first season. I haven't watched the first season of Breaking Bad since like 2014 with my I parents. I think it aged like absolutely poorly. festering shit. Especially those first few episodes where it was just like, I don't know what this show wants to do. Is the first do. season where the uh, the sound bite we have, has some good stuff. Yes. That, okay. Yes. Uh, we smoking Walt, weed and reggae Walt music playing. Weed, we- weggae. Weggae playing. To um, be fair. Whoa. To be fair. The cousins walking away from the explosion. That is, is in a pretty later unforgivable. That's so bad. That is, I don't know what Vince Gilligan was thinking. I just thought it'd be kind of cool. I, I, they've raked me across the coals for years. It was a cool scene. I've been vilified. They're going to crucify me. That's my Vince. Let's get off of Breaking Bad. We're not talking about shows all day, all podcast. Um, so the whole point that I even brought up fallout following the conversation about the boys will you play it <sighs> one day mm-hmm. one day i say that about a hundred different did. games uh just like uh dragon age uh well, blah, blah, blah. what is it oregon origins oregon. <laughs> organs um i have to play that i don't know when it's gonna be but the whole point i'm making here is it's interesting what amazon is doing they are this company with endless money, and they are leading like this gore renaissance. That's true. It is a strange position to be in because I think it's one of the reasons I really took to that first episode of Fallout is a lot of the the blood squibs, the practical so effects. So good. Just, it felt so like I don't know if immersive is the right word, but it just felt so authentic. It did. I and was having fun with that. In contrast to a lot of like I think. For the sheer scale of what the boys is trying to show us with CGI, they do a pretty good job, even though it's a big CGI mess a lot of the time. I uh, like CGI. We always t- I, like I've said a billion times ad nauseum. It couldn't be made ten years ago, but it's still it looks very CGI. But it doesn't bother me. Um, but also, there's Invincible, which is another Amazon show that's huge, gory as shit. So fucking gory, but it doesn't carry the same cynicism right. that I would say Fallout and the Boys has. Like the mean spiritedness, that's the interesting thing. It's a gore filled show that will be so cruel and un- and just gross, but it's it's got heart. That's why I think eventually you need to check it out. Like I I got so sick of superhero stuff over the like like the Marvel the, the ten years of Marvel, you know, starting with ten. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. It's been like 15. It, well, it was about a 10-year trek where I was so into it, and then I so got out of it. Oh, okay. And for me to be getting into these odd, kind of like subverted superhero ideas, even to an extent, Invincible does it. Invincible's a good show. Even though the last season, I really didn't care for very much. The first season of that show, awesome stuff. You need to watch it eventually. Um, even though it's it's like one of the least Chris kind of shows uh, yeah. I can picture. I've been told by multiple people I have to watch but it. But that's the thing. Chris always surprises me. Just when I think I've got it, like, 
you know, a beat on what he is, what's in his brain, what his true tastes are. Keep you on your He toes. shocks me. Mm-hmm. So I, I got to say, props to uh, props to Amazon for really going the distance with gore. And they need it. They need the good word. I feel like a company that rich would, would opt more for like a Disney approach where everything is focus tested to f- fucking hell. But no, they're just it's raw. It's actually shocking now that you mention it like that. Yeah, They are raw and dangerous. Yeah. And I think it's awesome. Well, just to kind of wrap up the TV and movie talk, Chris saw a little movie that I really want to see called Late Night with the Devil. Yeah, I did. Are you going to watch that soon? I'm going to watch that very soon because it's on Shudder. You feel like you are going to miss out because you watched the Half in the Bag review. Not a bit. Not a bit. Are you disappointed in what they said? No. Okay. No. I think they underplayed it. I think I'm surprised they didn't like it more. I mean, they they were pretty. I think that like but... fucking possessed girl. Spoilers with fucking light shooting out of her head at the end really left a pretty sour taste in their mouth. Maybe, yeah. I think that just kind of betrayed all the goodwill the film had built. Mm. In a lot of ways, well, it's it's another... like Ten Cloverfield Lane at the end. No, 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 it's not that. It's it's really not. It's um, I enjoyed that. That's a fun ride of a movie because of the way it's structured. The yeah. one single night mm-hmm. tape. Like recording of a late night show, on which Halloween. is a an idea I love. It's awesome, and I found myself when they would like do the cut to commercial and it would go to black and white behind the scenes. I almost was like, "Oh, commercial! Look, pull up, check my phone really quick." I was like that into it. Well, like similar to how I like pulpy like seventies sci fi novels. Um, I think this 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 era in the late seventies of late night. You know Johnny Carson competition. It's such a it's such a fun, interesting idea. Mm-hmm. I'm so nostalgic for that kind of thing. I, I watched a lot of old Johnny Carson growing up. Well, the thing that um, I think really like one of the reasons I really like this movie is what I said earlier is it is silly. It knows it's being silly at points, but it plays it straight as an arrow. You know what I mean? Were you beating your fist against your your theater armrest? You went to a fancy Dude, theater. I was locked in. He had a, like a th- he and Daniel had a table, it like was a an, swinging table. It was an AMS, It was a lounge chair. It was a lazy boy. It was, and there was like no one in the theater hardly, right? It was four people total, That's including so us. That's so awesome. That's the best way to see a movie like awesome. that. And um, no, but these these huge lazy boys had like a like a airplane tray Ooh. practically. You sit down and it like locks you in like a roller coaster. Yeah, that that Carson era. That it's just it's like a movie that was written for me. And to further the this is a point I wanted to get to. For me, I was like, this is perfect for my parents. Oh, this, yeah. This is so cool. And you know what? That movie is not mean-spirited. And Thank I God. think your mom thinks it is. That's like, what, what I she's wanted saying, to talk right? about. Ever since my sister passed away, my mother, my mother's always been kind of uh, superstitious, pretty superstitious. Like, she won't let me wash clothes on New Year's. Like she's like, if you don't eat Hoppin' John around New Year's, you're gonna you're gonna be poor forever. You gotta eat your greens, you know. And like black cats crossing the street, she fucking stops in the middle of the road and does a U turn. This woman has like ten degrees, but um, at least these are like things you can recognize. I get a lot of Slavic like tr- uh, superstitions. Like sometimes I'll be whistling and I just hear stop. I can't whistle inside. Are you serious? It's bad luck. I've never heard of that. Yep, can't whistle inside. These are just ingrained in you? No, no, no not me. Oh! I'm being told I cannot whistle inside because it's, ah. like it's like a Eastern European thing that's it's bad Well, luck. to make matters worse, like when my parents were younger, they were really, I hate to say this like this, irresponsible hippies. with my sister. Oh. They weren't hippies. Okay. Um, they hated hippies, actually. Oh, shit. Even though my dad smoked a lot of pot. But... They showed my sister, like, Terminator 2 or something when she was, like, 6. And they showed her the Pretty Exorcist. Hardcore. They showed her the, oh. the fucking Exorcist at, like, 10. And so I'm thinking back, oh, yeah, you guys like the Exorcist. You, you were okay with the Exorcist. But ever since my sister passed away, my mother thinks, like, everything is out to get oh. the family. And so she thinks if we watch Late Night with the Devil, like I showed her the trailer, and as soon as it tur- she was made aware it was like a, an exorcism possession, possession movie, yeah. she was like, I can't let this into our house. We can't watch this. Someone will die. And I just get so frustrated. And I keep bringing it up. And I keep harping. Just like, come on. 
Come on. You know, let's watch it around Halloween. It's not scary. It's not mean spirited. It is like I'm not gonna say it's schlocky, it's but it's uplifting. It, like, it, no, no, no. But it, it knows it's not being it it it's not serious. It's pretty silly. Well, you know, when you have that much AI art. <laughs> Well, it, it was not much. much. <laughs> it was not much, but that's what but every... Not, it's not like the Civil War shit. That, oh, God. I don't even want to think about that. I hate it. That, wow. That, like, the headlines were running wild. Like, every scene in Late Night with the Devil had fucking AI art. But it's like... They're interstitials. A couple things. It's, um, I think if you put them all together, it might be six seconds. Like, you, me, and Daniel were talking about it, and we were just like, we don't even know why they needed to do that. Just make a sign. At why worst, would you need at that? worst, I'm just thinking like, oh, why? Yeah, but I'm gonna like move right past. I don't it, think you know? if anyone pointed it out to me, I would have even realized it. You would have to look at a lot of AI art, exactly. <laughs> Which I don't because I mean, do, it's not so. like the weird garbled looking like text. It, it just it looks right. So all the people pointing it out, I'm just like, you're kind of fucking this up for me. But well, all the people pointing it out probably had it pointed out to them by someone else, like you know, of course. But I mean, to cap it all off, just. I think it has been a very long time coming for David Dast Malchin. Mm-hmm. Am mm-hmm. I saying David Dast Malchin right? David Dast Malkian. Or Malkian. Malkian. Wow. Never would have seen that common. I believe one of his parents is like Iranian. Oh, it kind of shows. Iranian. Mixed like Iranian and like. Oh, Mike Staklasa was like, it's a super German name, which is not. <laughs> what? It's like, it's like Armenian. What the fuck? That man is like 51 or something. He has been hoofing it, He's awesome. playing character roles, like character actor roles, for like 20-something years plus. And he finally gets this big Dude, thing. I, it's disappointing how old David Lynch is because he's such a David Lynch-looking guy. Mm-hmm. He would just mm-hmm. be so good in a Lynch movie. Hey, there's still time, you know? No, David's no spring chicken, but I think he's got a few more well, things. Hey, neither is fucking Coppola, but he's making a new movie. Really? Megalopolis. They just dropped a teaser trailer. Are you kidding me? No. Oh, he's 85 or something. This asshole won't stop. You don't know about this? <laughs> no. It's a long awaited teaser trailer for it's like his final film. Oh, oh obviously. Gosh. He's not gonna be able to keep cooking for that long. Well, final movie talk. Who would have thunk it? Oppenheimer swept the Oscars. This is old news now, but we haven't had the chance to talk about it. Oppenheimer took home. Damn near every relevant Oscar. It was made to. <laughs> of it, it was did. stupid, though. I what won Best Picture, actually. It did, it didn't it? Yeah. No, it didn't. It was Best Picture. No, it was Best Director. What won Best Picture? Hold on. Let me do that right now. Poor Little Things or whatever. Best Picture 2024 Oscars. Well, 2023. According to Wikipedia, the 96th Academy Awards ceremony which was presented by the Academy of Motion Picture Windbag, Science, damn. took place on March 10th, 2024 at the Dolby Theater in Hollywood, Los Angeles. Oppenheimer. Oh, okay. I was right. I was right! You, you put me through this. Um, <laughs> fucking Oppenheimer got best actor, best director, best picture, and like a slew of other things. I expected it to get best best actor. That was a sure thing. Come on, Killian Murphy, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Um, this is the most Oscar bait movie. Did it uh, I'm not gonna ask. Well, did it win best editing? I would hope not. Just gotta stop. I would man. hope not. That Bohemian Rhapsody that fucking, movie won that. Oh, Have you seen It's horrible. It's terribly edited. That scene where they're all sitting at the table. Each time someone talks, it switches the camera. What, it, what the thinking? fuck? How would you give that best editing? It's funny to even bring up the Oscars as if they're relevant because some of the choices they've made over the years. But, I mean, it's just worth noting because, god damn, fucking Nolan, like, you don't deserve anything. You've been making movies that have made you rich for, like, 20 years plus. But, god damn, I'm just happy for him because he's such a genre director. Mm Mm-hmm. And to finally see him just get the praise he needs without people having to be like, well, it's a superhero movie, so we can't give it to that. Right. Even though Heath Ledger kind of had to get that posthumous Oscar. Um, I'm just so happy about everyone on the everyone on the team in that movie, other than the people who thought about the black glove scene. That was a real eyesore. But um, what the black glove that killed Florence Pugh's character? 
or like oh, was yeah, alleged so that quick, like alleged yeah, best editing. That's what I'm talking about. That's like, still one of so... the, the strangest so- sticking out sore thumbs in that movie. Why did you have to do that? Like, why do you want this like <laughs> this ambiguity Sitting in that theater? Like, being like, did she die? Is this <laughs> like <laughs> is this like like Christopher Nolan said? I'm gonna do like some revisionist history here. I'm gonna confuse people and make it seem like oh this could have been a murder, not just a suicide. Why? Like that's the strangest choice. But yeah, good on you, Nolan. Just wanted to acknowledge that. One of my favorite my favorite blockbuster director. Yeah, I just want to hats off to you, bud. You fucking nailed it. What do you think his next thing is going to be? You think he's going to return back to like his like I think he's probably going to go back to more like indie kind of stuff. Really? I think he's because you uh, I think Tenet was like the most Nolan movie and it, it, it was, didn't It's it's like how hit. you talk about Demon Souls. It's like the most Souls game world tendency. <laughs> yeah. That's the most Nolan fucking movie and I like that movie, all right, you know. I didn't need to, I didn't, I really, I'm happy my faith in Nolan was restored because his, like, crybaby shit about Tenet, you have to see it in the theater. You have to. This is, this is not fair. This whole thing, because the pandemic happened where he was just like, no, get out there, see my movie. Oh, I'm so butthurt. Hire a sound editor that can (laughs) mix properly. Then at, it would be a better experience in the theater. At this point, I think it's just the brand. <laughs> I don't think he can break I away from it. He hears that and he's like, I'm sticking with it. The That's reason, just me. The reason I think Nolan is going to step back and do smaller movies that will still make ass loads of money is that Oppenheimer cost $100 million to make. Mm-hmm. There's been a lot of backlash lately about like why does every Marvel movie just have to be immediately this will be like three hundred and fifty million. Like, I think Godzilla minus one also was like a hundred million and proved that like you don't need these automatic assumed budgets of like four hundred million dollars to make a great movie. So I think there's gonna be coming soon a renaissance of cheap cheap more cheaply made movies can be some of the best movies possible. Hey, I mean Great example of like an original IP, Late Night with the Devil. Small, exactly, exactly. Small in scope that costs and... like thirty million, maybe thirty to fifty million. I've it's heard. Amazing, it costs if that not much. less than that. It's one set. So I think well, there's a few. But yeah. I think that's going to be the general trend in Hollywood. For, I hope man. for at least half a decade. Um, uh, there have been a lot of interesting, like mid-budget films, as opposed to like it's either huge or small. Mm-hmm. Like I know you said you have no interest, but like Iron Claw is a good example. Zone of Interest, which is like that. I don't know if you know anything about that, no. but it's like a, a middle budget, like Holocaust movie. Oh, fun! Um, and then of course, Late Night with the Devil. I'm, I know I'm missing out a ton, but I am happy to see that. Like, I don't know. It's not AAA, but it's not indie. You know? Yeah. Um. Well, we're taking quite a pivot. We're finally out of movies and TV. I've said everything I have to say. I've caught up on all of it. I'm going to go Papa Claw. Papa Claw. Oh, Pop Claw. Great, great boys reference. Great boys reference. A-Train's girlfriend. Pop. Had a 10 out of 10 body and a 4 out of 10 face. We got the AI bug a few months, like a month or so ago. Suno AI. Oh. Fucking took over. Um, I was shocked to be the one that introduced everyone. You're Normally, I'm like the last guy yeah. to introduce like new funny things. And... I think I first saw it on the old H3 oh, podcast God. just to make matters worse, to make you feel even dirtier, filthy even. And it just turned into quite a thing for about a week, which is what happens with everybody when there's new AI technology. Yeah, but there's something more like unpredictable about this one that I enjoy. Well, quite a bit. The, f- the first thing I think that really gave it like traction and like wind beneath the wings, we did. Cr- Crab legs and crack happened. Yeah. Crab legs and crack. We I may just tack that on at the end of this or something. It talk about an immediate first pitch it home was run. Perfect. That it, was like the first thing we did. Everything was perfect about it. Down to the last detail. Sorry, I'm being homelander. Um I'm over it now, but goddamn were those some fun days. Yeah. Just testing out the limits of AI, like we did with Night Cafe. Yeah, it's also important to note that the crab legs and crack is like pitch perfect even in the lyrics, and that's the like auto generated lyrics. We did not write well, those. That, yes, and the thing about it is, there's just like there is so much human nature programmed into this thing. That's what's kind of scary about it because 
it it could tell somehow that this was not just this, like a silly fun song. This was about like a miserable person. Like the whole line, crab this, this, legs and crack the taste of despair. This cracked up hell. It like how did it do that? We didn't put that much of a prompt into it, but it just keyed right into it and ran. It was really impressive. And you know, it's the typical AI thing where like ninety five percent of it's just basically a bunch of crap. But man, when it hits, have we talked about the Mesa stuff on here? Can no, I we say haven't. the name Mesa? I guess, but it's not really that interesting. Well, it, I I really like. You did one. Mesa is a long story. I don't know how to introduce it. It's just like a, an idiot in Houston that Jesus knows or knew. And the fucking, like, I got my poopies. What the fuck did you do? There was one night where you were just like, it was a song, like, from, like, the perspective of Mesa, but he was talking about, like, his poopies. I don't remember this. It was, like, the most juvenile, hilarious thing. Was this me typing in the lyrics? Yes. Oh, okay. And you also did that with the Dark Souls the, 2 and the Halo 5 and the, the Dark Souls 5. To, yeah, and to me, when when you mix up the numbers like that. When the, you are completely out of your mind uh, with like I'm alcohol, really funny. you create... Yeah, shut the fuck <laughs> up. I'm trying to say that. Don't say it. Um, you'd enter this, like, this unmanned danger transpo mm-hmm. zone where you cannot do these things when you're sober. You cannot pull them off. It is just reckless abandon to the <laughs> wind. Might as well be me just smashing a keyboard. Like yes, a but it comes out like magic. I don't know. If you haven't checked out Suno AI, it's, oh, it's, it's pretty cool. It's a fun little tool to mess with. I would hardly call it a tool because it's mostly just like for yourself to laugh at, but it's fun. And it contr- continues the trend of eliminating like the human element in <sighs> music, which has already been a, a growing problem for like 15 years. Well, my favorite part's when it fucks up. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's hysterical. Well, also, one of the first things you told me about on this trip uh, was you you and your friends in Chicago trying to make screams. We have made an entire album, a reggae album, of uh, just this spurned man who cannot have what he wants. Which I think is in the same camp as the, the Japanese man being pelted by eggs by sure. children. I don't know I how it landed on it's reggae. It's very in the same vein. I think the reggae part came from... Why this guy only screams in this genre for some reason? Yeah, but the whole thing is like he can't have his Xbox. He can't eat the hot pepper. Like his dad unplugged his Xbox. Just, can't can't sleep over at his friends. It's he's like a thirty eight year old awesome, man. and he's screaming about it. <laughs> he's fucking screaming. Well, the all first the time. line is, "Me want to play Halo 3. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, like I had trouble making like legitimate death metal sounding stuff important to know similar problem important to note those ones that i showed you took like 30 40 tries to this date i've still never done one with custom lyrics i i like to be surprised so i would never write it myself (laughs) well i mean sometimes you can make a country song and just have it go beer 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 and he's just going with man we lost toby keith no more red and daniel said a line that i will probably be reciting in my mind as i die what no more red cup. What? Don't Greg be. De- oh, that's a revealer. <laughs> Don't Greg me. Don't Greg me. Get that Greg out of here. Um, let's pivot to pets a little bit. Okay. There has been a horrible pox upon this floor in the last month or so. Which, oh, goodness. Shit's losing hair in here, man. I can't be in here. Man. Fungus is a fucking Mungus. bitch. Oh. I have man, fungus is such a the threat of the last of us is so real. You hear the bird? Fucking bird. That's another pox that's landed upon us lately. I wonder it's if that, that'll pick up. It's that fucking solar flare burning the bush out there right now. We got like a fucking solar flare event going on. We're seeing the northern lights from fucking Georgia. Dude, What's going on? What a tone setter for the night. Fucking mist have have CNN on like there's a like corona explosion the power grid the power grid is at risk that's a great time to do a podcast the sun is flinging particles at us at 500 miles per second and we're here doing a podcast and talking about fungus i made a okay this fucking bird i made just the the dumbest mistake that like 
had it not been for medical intervention, could have seriously ruined a life, like destroyed a life, for like a misery for for a living thing for the rest of its life. Scrambles got ringworm. My hamster got fucking ringworm, and I'm fucking like reeling like how did she get fungus hey jay you know when a hamster dies you should probably clean the shit out of it the fucking cage and the tubes so that your next hamster that you just let slather its body all over fucking rampant fungal mold yeah you should have had a little pause with that shouldn't i have you have literal tubing and pipe with like like radiating nuclear fungus growing in it. I wonder how the hamster got sick. <laughs> I cannot believe this cosmic mistake I made. There was some fucking fungus from Mr. Crowley who pissed and shat all over his hamster tubes, and I just stuck it right in. Let this new hamster deal with it. And at first, you know, I'm thinking, oh my God, she's got like, she's got like Cushing, she's dying. No, every inch of her body has a ringworm infection on it. She's in hell. She's been fucking dying almost. Misery. Her whole, every hair on her body almost has fallen out. She looks like a naked mole rat, like Jesus pointed out. God damn, I'm an idiot. So, I get her a fucking, like, two, like, do you know how much these enclosures cost? They look pricey. $250 for some plywood. Yeah. This company, Night Angel, makes these phenomenal enclosures, but they're fucking highway robbery expensive. And I said, you know what? Dougie's had a nice cage for a while. I, I need to get rid of these old cages. Let me get this fucking nightmare $300 thing just as soon as I spend an additional $150 on bedding. Oh, the hamster has a horrifying ringworm infection. She has to be taken out of that immediately. You have to burn that shit. That's, this is all the veterinarian telling the me this thing? shit. All the shit you see in here has to be burned. In there. Yes. Not the whole thing. No, okay, we're gonna okay. we're gonna fix the cage. This is too much of an investment. I thought so. But it's just such a goddamn damned if you do, damned if you don't, you fucked up. So the hamster had to move back into just old, miserable environments. She had a fucking wonderland, the greatest thing ever for a little rat that cost twelve dollars. Nope, back into the fucking hell zone. She's had to move back into this easy-to-sterilize cage, and I've had to fucking dose a hamster every day for l the last three weeks, and I've got another week to go. You're on the home stretch, at least. She is, and she's looking a she's little a healthier. Warrior. She's a warrior. Man, I love this girl. if this had been Dougie, he would have just killed over and died. He is a lesser beast. Scrambles is a tank. A trooper. Truly a trooper. And I just, I cannot wait for the day that she's all back to normal and I can fucking make this enclosure with all the bedding and the moss and the fucking crazy shit again. Me and Chris are going to move this cage downstairs tomorrow. We're going to exercise the utmost caution because people don't, people underestimate fungus. Fungal spores, oh, they're, they can live for years yeah. without sustenance, without a source of anything. Every time I have to deal with this hamster, I have to wear gloves. I have to wash my hands constantly. It is horrible. Can you get the ringworm from her? I got the ringworm from her. Oh, that's her. right. You got it on your like, hand, right? Well, actually, it turned out this is something else. Oh. The white bedding in this cage, it gets everywhere. And I didn't think about it. You know, I get drunk one night wearing my red robe. I'd end up. Wish on, you would stop that. I'd end up on the floor. I'd wake up like three hours later after drinking like a nut, <laughs> and there'd be bedding on the back of the robe, and I dive into bed and I don't think oh. about it. I got a wing, a wing worm, wing worm, wing worm. Wing I got a ringworm male spot on my back. Oh, it was on my back from the shit I tracked into the bed. I was sleeping with infected bedding. Covered in fungus. Am I? No. Okay. This bed has been Lysoled yeah. to fucking death. You can't smell it anymore unless you put your nose close. I nuked this bed. I should have thrown out the mattress. I fucking... I need to anyway, because that dip. <laughs> but God only knows what that's doing to my spine. But I got a ringworm spot on my back. I got ringworm from a fucking rodent. What in the fuck? You just... Did you dip into the... No, I haven't been drinking that. Oh. 
Um, I got some uh, Lotrimazole antifungal. Used it for like three weeks. Knocked Topical? it right out. Yeah. Okay. That's the problem. Like the the veterinarian, the, the, the like uh, the pills fuck your liver up. Well, that's also the ringworm treatment for scrambles. They can only be on it for like four that's weeks. What, I know yeah. because it'll kill them if you do much more. It's serious stuff. And they can have adverse reactions, but <clears throat> scrambles is scrambles is like Abby compared to Rocco, and Rocco is Dougie. Got it. You know, just a beefy monster. And if, like you said, if if it had been any other hamster, mm-hmm. probably would have been mm-hmm. dead. But she's back. She's vibrant. She may be almost completely hairless, but her personality has come back. Chris, it got so bad in this cage. I put down, you know, those little like fruity pie things in the little shell. Mm-hmm. She would previously, you said it yourself. I would post a video of her eating one of those and just being crazy, and just like trying to pull it into a tube spastically and beating her head against everything. I put, this is where I knew something had to be done. There had to be an intervention. I put one of those in the cage when she was at her worst. She just barely peeled herself out. Oh. And she calmly walked up to that thing and just nibbled at she it. She was hurting. Before that, she would shred it. She would slam it against the walls. It would be flying in every direction. And I said, I got to do something. And sadly, the veterinarian thought that she had initially contact dermatitis. Because when this started... It was just like her, her under her throat area. Then every part started to fall out. The infection progressed. The fucking veterinarian is 71 years old. He's been working with exotic pets for like 55 years. He said this is the worst fungal infection I've ever seen in a rodent in my life. He pulled out this little uh, like fluorescent light and shined it on uh, scrambles during the inspection. Her entire body glowed her mouth looked nuclear violet and he was just like this animal is crawling in fungus like there is not a single part of her body that is not infected (sighs) and then you know the issue is i'm wrapping this up by the way i know this has gone on for like 30 minutes um they can infinitely reinfect themselves if you don't know what you're doing really they can't build up immunity to it no ringworm is Highly contagious. Oh, I know. And aggressive. It, that's why it's a it's the same thing as jock. Not jock. Jock no. is athlete's foot. Athlete's foot. That's... They're all the same family. Tinea, vul- tinea vulgaris, I believe it's called. And uh, oh, that's acne vulgaris. It's uh, something else. Tinea. Crazy name. And so, literally, like every two days, I have to do it tomorrow. I have to take all of her. Like the doc, the the doctor, the veterinarian was like, "Don't put." That fucking paper, like, bedding, do not fuck with that. You have made this so much worse on this animal because you have tried to spoil her. So, she gets a thin paper towel. That's specifically what he said. But over time, she tears it apart and tries to start covering herself in it for a hide. Every other, I need to clean it out, like, every two days. It's fucking crazy. And she keeps like hurting herself in there and having like open wounds and that's how you get infected Uh. the reason i got it on my back was not because it just rubbed against like skin you have to have an open wound i have back acne oh acne on your back is an open wound that's actually uh, similarly i had a really bad staph infection when i was in sixth grade and it stemmed from a friend whose parents were extremely negligent and irresponsible not telling that she was a carrier of mrsa staphylococcus are you serious and i went over to their place that's fucking and I, I got responsible as shit we were like i don't know we were just playing around in the like the lake and the yard thousand oh dude and uh i got bit by ants which creates open wounds sort of and uh yep to like wash it off my friend took a shower upstairs and i went to his parents bathroom to take a shower Dude, my legs got fucked. And to make matters worse, I don't know if I've told you this. To make matters worse, we went on a three-day like overnight field trip in sixth grade, and I kept telling the teachers like, "My legs are fucking hurting." Your legs can't catch a break between my that legs, wound you got like for I, soccer or whatever. I'm telling, I, I keep telling them like, I can't stand still. My legs hurt so much, and they kept giving me like Advil. <laughs> when I got back. Like off the bus, I was like, "Mom, I my legs hurt so much. Like I don't know what's happening. I got bit by ants." We went to the doctor, and he was like, "Yeah, if this goes untreated, like you lose your legs." Oh my god! Like th- that's what was happening. It can get to your bone, and it's oh my god, it, you can't recover from it. 
But anyway, holy shit, that dude. was a long time ago. But you never told me that. No, I had antibiotics, and the antibiotics initially fed the infection even worse. Oh. It was a hell of a time. Well, yep. speaking of antibiotics, um, and the teachers, dude, how could they be so negligent? Just say take an Advil and fuck that's, off. That's not. It's not their own child. They're they're shitty. I, I I met so many of those types at my school, which was a very similar school to yours. But uh, yeah, I've had to dose the hamster every day, which has been. I remember in the the vet's office when he said that. I was just like, well, I guess you know, I'm supposed to handle and be social with the hamsters pretty often. So they're not horrible and biting you when you try to deal with them. Right. I was like, well, I guess I'm going to get to know Miss Scrambles very well. And well, who I wouldn't, have. Well, who wouldn't want to know her? Well, I mean, what? she is such a, a fighter. But she's a she's a winner. Well, it's like that first video I filmed of me doing the first dose. When I put that syringe toward her mouth, I literally have to pick her up, put my index and like thumb on the back of her neck to try to control her. And you need to taper down like that hedgehog. In that, oh god, no! I would never. I God, fuck that. She in the first video I posted, she's fucking swatting the syringe. She swats it away, like she is a nasty little thing. She is vicious. And so, if it was Dougie, he'd probably just be like, eh, and just take it. She fights me every time. She will grab the syringe and seriously wrestle it out of her mouth. And she's biting. She won't open her mouth. We figured it out. We've gotten. We, we we can work together now, and it's gotten to the point where you noticed last night. Even she, uh, she looks like she wanted like, it. It's a treat. Yeah. Um. So yeah. No more hamster talk. I'm done hamster talk. I am done hamster talk. Are we wrapping up? We're nearing wrap up, but Great. there's a couple more big ones. I'm afraid. Um. I need to make a formal apology to you and Daniel. Oh God. This segment is called Apologies for the Pestagram. I have a burner Instagram account. I'm glad I'm putting this toward the, the end of this, so people probably won't ever hear this, where I follow, like, plastic surgery freaks. Yeah. yeah. Which, the whole long and short of this is, like, on the internet and in real life, I have totally different preferences. I know you do. We're kind of ribbing on you. It's but like, I just don't want to look at these Mewtwo freaks anymore. I don't know why I have this, like... The fantasy and reality kind no, of thing? No, this or inclination what? to where, let's say it's like a big Friday night. We're all on Discord on voice. We're, we got webcams. We've been playing games, watching shows. We're, we're a little inebriated. And it's like, in my mind, wouldn't it be fun just to take a walk down this, like, circus of, like, BBLs and horrible boob jobs and just... That works with Jesus. That's fun for Jesus. But you and Daniel inherently are so much more sophisticated no, no, about no, no, this no, no, kind no. of thing. I, Am I putting words in your mouth? This is a little. It's a little different. I live in a studio apartment, which frequently has two people in it, and it's just a little bit hard to be like a Tex Avery, like banging my hand on the table kind of guy. I wasn't fully expecting that. I don't know what I was expecting, but it's like. I had to like sit myself down and be like, what would this look like from the outside? Like this guy is streaming an Instagram feed where it's just like jiggling boobs. Like what what does he want? What does he fucking want? What is he proving? What is he doing? And I just realized I don't have a good answer for that. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want it to stop. It's stopping. Oh Pestagram is no more. Unless it's Wait, a- you deleted it? No. No, I didn't think it's you would no do that. It's no more for you and no Daniel. Way. If it's me and Jesus, goddamn, we're gonna sit and and, and Yuck about, you know... You're going to have to make a new server. Plastic me. freaks. We, we do need to. Uh, no. But, yeah, I, I don't know what I was doing. I just wanted this on the record. I realized I was being a weirdo. Uh, thank God there's no there are no women in this group. If there were, I probably would never even show it. But just imagine being a woman. Impossible. And, like, some dude just like, hey, check this out. Check this out. What do you think it is? What do you think? It's like, what... what what are, what are you going to say? Yeah, that's sick. That's <laughs> badass. I really like that BBL. Those, that's this lady that's had 46 BBLs and looks like a fucking alien. Cool. That's a good one. So that's that. Um, I'm just going to go. We're in like the rapid fire round now where I'm yeah. just listing things oh. off. Elden Ring DLC expectations. Oh. What is coming for us? We are coming. What is it? June 13th. Elden Ring DLC, 
and the boys comes back the day before. Holy shit. Fucking nuts. I'm telling you, man, Mesmer is not going to be the big bad. Well, that's par for the course. There's going to be some weird, like, cosmic creature after him. I mean, that's just what that game, of these games do. I mean, it's hard to call Manus, like, a cosmic creature. He's an abyssal well, creature. But, he's like but a it's the same being. spirit. Yeah. yeah. And historically, as we've discussed ad nauseum, FromSoft's DLC, they don't play. They That shit is next level. Dude, it's, it's better it's, than the rest of the game, It's been usually. two and a half years, almost, since that game came out. This thing has been, like, in the oven for a while. That's the part. And, you know, there's a meme about, like, Miyazaki came out, the director of uh, all of our favorite games. He He's come out, and he's like, Ah, uh, yes, the Elden Ring DLC will be about... The map will be about the size of Limgrave. Oh, but, I didn't know that. Yeah. But... People, it's a different map. It well, it's a new area. You didn't. Know I guess that? I should have expected that. It's the Shadowlands. Oh! And I want this on record. Do you remember when we were hot on Elden Ring first, and we got to Moog's chamber, and I said that fucking hand in yeah, the yeah, egg. You called it. That's you called it. it. That's the DLC. You called I'm it. I'm fucking right. What's up? It was just like Filionor's thing mm-hmm. in uh, Dark Souls Three. And that's that. another interesting thing. Every one of the FromSoft games I've ever played. The DLC is already out by the time I get to it. Oh, yeah. This is the first one, day one for me. That's so exciting. And um, we're going to yeah. have those water cooler moments again. Oh, I, thank I'm God. So it was one of the best times. But the point I wanted to make was when Elden Ring first came out, Miyazaki came out and was like, the game will take 30 hours to complete. That's insane. And it turned out, on average, it's a little over 100 hours for everyone almost, even a lot of speedrunners. We runners. talked on the last podcast about how I, you think I'm like a checklist, like just do everything as fast as possible and end it. That game... I mean, well, I that am, was just Breath of the Wild. I am pretty quick with games usually, but that was a singular playthrough, and I, it, I think I clocked in at 77 hours, my nice. initial playthrough. Yeah, this is the whole talk about, like, how did Jay get, like, 5,000 hours way, on Breath of the Wild? By the way, speaking of a lot of hours, I am um, Yakuza. Playing, playing the new ya- newer Yakuza game, and I'm 71 hours in, and I just got to the final chapter. Unfucking believable But to my point, you can talk about Yakuza in a minute. No, 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 I don't want to. It's fine. My point being, he says the Elden Ring DLC will be the size of Limgrave. Contrast that with Elden Ring will be 30 hours. I'm thinking this is going to be massive. Big one, yeah. Big. It's not going to be. It's going to be huge. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the best parts of the game are coming. Because, I mean, if you look at Dark Souls 3's DLC, Bloodborne's DLC. Essential. It's the best part of the they're game. Not, they're not tacked on. Yes. It's what I look forward to on our replays is like, getting to the old Hunter stuff. I think as far as their DLCs go... I am least impressed with Dark Souls 2, which it's ironic that's because str- like that's totality, the most yeah. that's the most DLC they've ever given. Well fuck it's so but it was too much. It was 3 DLCs. It was 3. You got Crown of the Ivory King, Crown of the Sunken King, and what Crown of the Iron King, something like that. Dude. It's too it's overwhelming and they're really bad. They're not all bad but I think Dark Souls 1's DLC is at least the one I can say is really good, but is also my least favorite. I don't think it was fully cooked. I think that that carries on the spirit of a lot of Dark Souls 1. It was not fully cooked. And then, you know, you've got fucking Demon Souls that didn't have any DLC. No. And a lot of people thought... I think Dark Souls was, like, the just natural follow-up that they had to work on immediately. Because it was, like, one of those sleeper hits. You know, there were people that when the remaster came out, thought they were going to do a, DL- a DLC. Well, like, that's just fucking Blue Point, Who Blue Point was going to program all new areas what? for Demon no. Souls. Oh, that's stupid. fucking absurd. Why? But I think that's just what people want. You know? yeah, they're, they're, they're so blinded by their wants. But yeah, uh, Shadow of the Erd Tree, I'm thinking, is going <sighs> to fucking jettison this game back to being the best thing possible in the world, and everyone's going to be back on it. It'll we've have already, the, the fallout effect. Yes. We've already started our characters. We, we uh, said we were going to start in May. I think I started in late April because I'm an asshole and can't put this game down. I played this game on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC, all like at least three playthroughs, and it still holds Why up. didn't you ask me about the name of my character? Which one? The, my new one. 
You know it? Do you remember it? When is it again? Kingo Gondo. Kingo Gondo. Do you have you had dude, you don't know. Tell me about this. It is Kurosawa inspired. I was about to say I know it's that a, much. But it is not a samurai movie. Oh. It is a like noir thriller movie from like nineteen sixty five. And the main character played by Toshiro Mifune, yeah, the guy that's the legend. Yojimbo. The guy. Seven Samurai. He, he's he like, is the samurai. He's like Leonardo DiCaprio to Christopher Nolan or something. He's you know? just he's like the an executive of a shoe company in this movie, and his name is King Gogondo. So I went with that. Like, what a crazy name. That's awesome. All right. Why the fuck am I obsessed with the PS3? Tell me now. Uh, I hate 360. I would never turn on my 360 and actually play a game seriously on it. PS3 is... has exclusives, and it's nostalgic, and the cross-media bar is supreme. And I just never had one. Oh. Oh. You know, well, that explains it. I too. got this thing a few years ago. It's like a hidden mystery. You yeah, never it's just like it's so weird that I love form different formats. Like, why do I like Elden Ring so much? I'm like, ooh, buy that on Xbox. I'm gonna play this on PS5. You know, I got on the PSC. <laughs> PSC. That's a good title. No, it's not the PSC. <laughs> um, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just I have I found a used game store. And did you I, have a PSP? I did. You know, I we, did. We destroyed it. Which you, did your... you have a PSP? Yes. Okay. Uh, I had SOCOM US Navy SEALs. I had a... Uh... Sexy leg dot JP. No, you had that. I, um, had I always wanted that one, though. It was on UMD. I had some kind of game that was like in a cyberverse. It was like a first-person shooter. Something ah, cold, cold or code, coded arms. Coded arms. arms. I had That's that too. One. I had that too. That game sucked shit. It did, but it was a first person it shooter that was so mobile. Cool. It did. It was horrible. It was though. not good. So I've gotten all these games that I already, already own copies of. I was about Fallout Three on it. And it was like, why would you do would be that? An why? Awful mistake. Unplayable. The, nearly. The PlayStation Store for uh, PS3 is extremely weird. Like it's still there. But there are so many games, you can still pull up the game page, and it's like disc only. So I found this game that FromSoft published, Atlas made it, called 3D3D.Games. 3D 3D.Hero Games. No! 3D.GameHeroes. Nah! I'll no, never that's get it. it right. I'll never get it right. What? They just call it game. I'm trying to at gaslight the end. you about this. 3D Game. Hero Game. 3D O. Oh, I love oh, 3D O games. Yeah, they that. made Army Men. Um. But that game I got in pristine, like, condition off of eBay, it will not work. It's some kind of, like, optical drive error where it can't recognize certain games. And if it does this, you're basically fucked unless you rebuild the whole database of the system. And I don't want to do that. Okay. And it's just bullshit, and there's all this shit about, well, pick up your PS3 while you're inserting the disc and rotate it backwards and then forwards, and then you, you know this, all about my and you PS2. do that. Well, I had to smack the shit out of that PS2 to oh, have to read Oh, God, this. it's like a good VCR. Seriously, like it would have to be like a... Oh, no. That hard. Someone recommended that. Someone... It, it, it would work. It, yep. you, you could hear... The, you could almost... It sounded like the disc was like going... Like jamming. It was like... Doo, 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 doo. You'd hit it and just smooth out. The other problematic thing about the PS3, as much as I think it's a great platform with so much character that the PS4 and 5 do not have... Almost Nintendo-like. Yes. Um, very Nintendo-like. Um... Had to take it up a notch. You have to add funds on the PS3 store. Yeah, you can have a debit card linked to your PSN oh. account, but they won't let you just buy a game directly. You have to go to either the PS5 or PS4 store, or in a browser on your PSN account, and add funds. Okay, maybe I want to buy a game that after tax is going to cost me fifteen oh two. Well, you got to add twenty five. Well. The only options are in intervals of five. Oh, sorry. Only intervals of five. So I can add $10. I can add $15. But I can't add a specific amount. If I want that 1503 game, I have to do $20. What the fuck are we doing? This Nintendo bullshit. They've at least fixed that and said, like, you can add exact funds or whatever now. Have they? Not on the PS3. Okay, there you go. Thank you. But what a weird thing. That between the disc-only things, like the 3D whatever game. Um, I'm not even going to do it anymore. Disc-only. Can't download it digitally. Even though they're fully capable of doing that. It's rights holder issues, whatever, whatever. Um, what, a, what a bother. And also, to make matters even worse, using a capture card with a PS3 is like squeezing water from a stone. It has this thing where 
we're familiar with HDCP on PS4 and PS5. It can be turned on and off. It's a feature that was implemented so that people can't like record TV shows streaming on the device, but there is an option to turn it off on those platforms. There is not on PS3. It is permanently enabled. They have these things where you're like, okay, you got to get a, an HDMI splitter, get the O-Ray 3, get this exact model, and it strips the HDCP signal so that the secondary output will be fully open to capture. I did everything right. just doesn't work. Yeah. It's just like I did everything right to get the 3D whatever game. just doesn't work. There is so much wrong with the PS3, but I am so attracted to it as this mystical object. I don't know what that was wrong with me. All right, I finished Loki. Loki's ending was <laughs> Loki's ending was really haunting and mysterious. Can I please spoil the whole show for you? Yeah. The concept of Loki is I've talked about this in the podcast before. Sorry, guys. You remember in Endgame when they go back in time? No. And well, in Endgame they have to go back in time to basically fuck over Thanos army base. Was that it? That was one of the back in time things. Uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man meets his father yeah. at the same age using something called the Pym Particle, which I told my dad the key to fixing what happened with the snap in Infinity War, they're going to go back in time somehow. And I knew it was going to be Ant Man. He made the Pym Particle. They went back in time. And in one of those sequences, it's following the capture of Loki in New York at the end of Avengers Endgame. Or, uh, <laughs> Avengers 1. <laughs> Avengers 1. And because of their trickery going back in time, the Tesseract, which contained the Time Stone, is dropped, and an incarcerated Loki in chains and, like, braces sees this in a moment of panic, because, like, Steve Rogers is fighting Steve Rogers, Captain America on Captain America, and he picks up the Tesseract. Now, in this show, there is this thing called the TVA, the Time Variant Authority. A variant is someone that either from trickery with time or some sort of nightmare cosmic event like the snap, it creates splinter paths in something called the sacred timeline, which is the natural progression of time. Someone moderates that. These th people are like outside of time. And Loki basically, when he picks up that Tesseract, becomes a variant because the Loki in Avengers I Infinity War was killed by Thanos. So this is how Loki is still alive. It's like the 2011 Loki picks up the Tesseract, gets zapped out, the TVA picks him up because he's a variant. He shouldn't be here. This is fucked up. And it creates this endless chain of events where everything falls apart. Long story short, by the end of the show, Loki becomes the keeper of time who manually, as a god, holds the thread of time on the time throne, but he is trapped there eternally. Do you remember... I am so, like, genuinely right now impressed how you did that without stumbling once. <laughs> That's the thing. That I have, was, like, awesome. I feel like I have a degree of wet that brain, awesome. but I have this encyclopedic knowledge of the Marvel movies and certain properties, and I'm not even in that Marvel that much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but this show was so out there, and it had the retro-futurism aspect mm -hmm. that sort of controlled it. I think control massively influenced it. You've got a time variance authority where they're on clickety-clackety typewriters, but they also have something called a temp pad where they can open a door to any time in any place and just step through it and be in like the civil war so that they can control these variants so that the timeline doesn't fuck up and by the end of it loki basically breaks everything and realizes i have to sacrifice myself i have to fall on my sword and become the keeper the keeper of time for eternity so he is literally trapped on a throne holding the fucking timeline together and he's there forever. Is it the end of the show entirely? Yes. Okay. Wow. It is the most bittersweet, holy shit, that's so cool, but also, like, haunting. This character is literally trapped forever doing one thing. Is it worth showing me the ending sequence? I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. It's I'd pretty like cool. It. It'll be so out of context, it won't mean anything. But it's so haunting. You gave me a lot of context there. And for, lo for this character's resolve to be this, oh, my God. That's, like... A nightmare forever, but it's stated in many of Loki's appearance appearances appearances. He wants a place in this world. He wants a throne. He always talked about in Avengers one. I want to be on the throne, controlling everything. And by the end of it, it's not how he wanted it, but he is. So fucking cool. 
That Loki show came during a time where I hated Marvel, but it is the standout, excellent product. Owen Wilson is incredible in it as basically Loki's sidekick. It's such a good show. It's so fucking good. And it dealt with Jonathan Majors being a wife-beating piece of shit and how they basically wrote out Kang, the Conqueror, as the next big bad. It's just, it's such a tidy, neat package. I loved it. Chris, we've gotten pretty old. Ugh. Kids today don't know what Borat is. A new one just came out. That's the kind of thing. Who's that... kids today? All these little, like, TikTokers that work under me, they don't know what Borat so, is. So, like, late teenagers? Yeah. Well, they were born... 17 to 20-year-olds. So they were born in, like, when it came out. And, you know, I wasn't born when... Um... But you know what? I know what fucking Titanic is, and that came out before I was born. My point exactly. I wasn't around when MASH was a thing, but I know MASH. Because I was raised by people that celebrate mass media across the decades. It's like you were... Well, I, you know, I grew up on classic rock. You were talking to my mom about Perry Mason. Yeah. You know, and her fondness. My parents did a very good job with me as mass media enthusiasts, making sure I'm not some dipshit that just knows everything, everything after current, I was conscious. Yeah. I, I think that's important to be a well-rounded individual. And I think that's lost on a lot of these kids today. And it's like, you have a smartphone. You have access to infinite information, the wealth of everything that has ever happened at your fingertips instantaneously, and you don't know. Fucking losers. These kids are not made the same. That's all I'm saying. At, at the risk of playing a little devil's advocate here, could yeah, someone just, has to just be that person, that kind of person that you're working with that just doesn't But it's all of the... them. I just walked across the front end one day and said, who knows what Borat is? And everyone's like, what? That's crazy. And I'm like, you know, my wife. Yeah. Uh, or they're nice. It's like, what are you doing? I felt like I was in a fever dream. It's just so trippy. Like, it's like, hey, Zeus, they don't look back. Yeah. They just go forward. I discovered air fryers. <laughs> That's it. All right. They're really cool. Wrapping up? Yeah. Music picks? Music picks. You first. Calling it. You, you bastard. You Why? know I hate going first. Why? It's easier to go second. You want me to go first? No, you always do that. You can't do that anymore. <laughs> it's almost like a bit at this point. You go first. No, I'll go first. Exactly. Oh, go ahead. Exactly. Um, it's called Bookshop Casanova, and it is by a little band called The Clientel. All right. Let her rip. After all the lights go low, we find ourselves Have I ever played that for you before? Never. Oh, you know why do I doubt myself? What, what's frustrating about that is that uh, I, it caught me doing what they're doing in the video. Yeah, I just was a tapping little subtle the side bob. of my claw. It's such a compelling. It's like a disco riff. I was tapping my claw and I didn't it's, even realize it's it. It's very disco, like like British. Well, you use the word earworm, and that's what that. That was. guitar solo is so simple, <laughs> but it, it's one of those things where like everyone is always like, yeah, you know, you could throw like eight thousand notes in, but just make it simple and memorable. And that's what they did with the guitar solo. Another thing I wanted to mention that is just so funny. Vocalist kind of sounded like Miles Kane a little bit. I could hear that for sure. Yeah, I, I I'm a sucker for them. Yeah, I can't help it. Sure. Those those British Isles people. But like, my goodness, <laughs> that guy. This this music video, it features all members of the band, I believe, and like, the, the lead singer is unfortunate looking, but like, goddamn, if he doesn't have some blue fucking eyes that sell it all. He's so cool. Intoxicating. <laughs> yes, and also just white people dancing, a man just dancing, sitting down. It's just, it's a really silly. I've never seen that before. That's a, a new one. It's a silly music video. It's eh. so cheap. 
but it's just such a good song. And I just, I don't know where I discovered this. I discovered it with Lauren, like, God, it was like 2005 or something when we were obsessed wow. with something called Yahoo Music. Where That's where I discovered oh, Trivium. I that. That's where I found Trivium. That's where I found Scar Symmetry. All kinds of great bands. Um, anyway, it's just a cool little tune. And this band is so obscure. Are they? They were big when this came out. They had a, a little bit of a splash. Mm. But like, you look at their top songs. This isn't even up there. And I listen to their top songs. I'm like, everyone's stupid. This song's great. What, what's wrong with people? This is obviously the breadwinner. Uh, great band. Very cool. The clientele. Neat name. It's the first it time I... Good name. That's how I learned that word. I didn't know what ah. clientele meant. I, I couldn't put it together. Now at work, it's like, uh, my clientele. All right. Moving on to Chris Pick. Oh, wait. Chris Pick? Chris Pick? No, just one. One, and then I'll show you some more. When so we're, mature. When we're having our music break. Yeah! Down, we yeah, we always night. do this. Um... I have uh, something interesting that I think you might be really partial to. Really? I like a good goth rock song. Mm. I like when goth rock is made in 2022. I think that's awesome. I have a, it, they're 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 kind of big and like I really like when goth rock flirts with surf rock. I really like that. Ooh. But what do you got? They're they're like a not big. They have like a maybe million listeners monthly on Spotify. That kind, that's a good it's measure pretty big. tool. It's pretty big. Pretty big in Europe. They're huge oh, in Europe. Okay. Well, huge is an exaggeration. They're but anyway, huge. let's go with "I Love You" by Fontaines. They're an Irish band. Fontaines. Yes. I love you. I love you. I told you I do. It's all I've ever felt. I've never felt so well. And if you don't know it, I wrote you this tune To be here loving you when I'm in the tomb I've had you the heart now from Dublin to Paris And if there was sunshine, it was never on me So close the rain, so pronounced is the pain Yeah Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, not Boba Flex. Stop, oh. Boba Flex. Okay. Lot to unpack right. there. Okay. First of all, I want to point out. I don't know if you noticed my face for almost like no. At least the, at the halfway point for the rest of the song, I had an open mouth, stupid grin awesome. the entire fucking I thought song. You would connect that with this is a sign. I thought you and I caught myself and I was like, my I'm just slack jaw, just grinning. And you're also going to hate me for this. The progression and peak of that song reminded me of Handlebars by Flowbox. <laughs> it came to this head where it's just like, you're like gripping the sides yeah. of your head like, oh my God, this thing is culminating in this incredible you know, climax. Interesting thing about that song is I actually tussled back and forth. I was like, is the chorus too much? Like, I'm not sure if I like it. And now I... I <clears throat> sorry. I've played it enough times where I'm just like, I look forward to that part now. Another thing I wanted to point out. First of all, that was fucking great. Yeah, I got to put that good. out there. That was fucking cool. I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. I'm Un just so happy that a goth rock song like that can come out That still. doesn't even really sound like goth rock to me. What do you take it as? <sighs> well, honestly, I hate to say this, but you've got a bug. You, this... This reminded me of, like, the shame vocalist in a lot of ways. He doesn't do the screaming. No, no, he doesn't. But, like, it's very post-punk. Yeah. Like, well, it's, it, it fit, that, that vocal style, you, it, it's like, oh, my gosh. Goodness gracious. I'm, like, at a loss for words. Um, that song reminded me of... Forgive me for this, but the, that music video you showed me from one of your more recent music picks, where it's like a like on a skating rink, and it's like, what, what was your last few music picks? Do you remember skating rink? Not skating rink. It's the one where like there was stuff keyed in and keyed out. Oh, a squid in a Squ swing in a dream. It reminded me not the sound. That was a great pick. It reminded me of you know you were pointing out like song structure, like chorus, verse, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. It seemed like. 
that song and that there's less of a defined movement of structure it's yeah. more of a continual build sure yeah. there's not like an earworm part well and that's I, what i said I about said that it, song i said it during the thing i like it when um songs will have like a consistent like chorus that like you've heard it before but it changes just a little bit and i really like well done similes i like the line i love you like a penny loves the pocket of oh. a priest and what was that about sucking ring suck the ring off every hand dude it says i love you like a penny loves the pocket of a priest i love you till the grass around my gravestone is deceased I that's think so cool lyrically that is your strongest pick okay hands down um i'm reeling like I still don't even know how to. I'm excited put my to show you some together more. about I, that. I, I'm I told extremely you, eager. I bought tickets for them today. Oh, they went on sale today. God, so. incredible! Uh, wh- where are they playing at? Salt Shed. Oh, okay, okay. But it's yeah, by Goose Island. It is so what nice. It is so interesting how we do have like our certain sounds that both of us uniquely can't escape, and that fits with yours so fucking well. They have um a little more variety to them so I, i'm eager to show you a little bit i more. think i'd be more willing to call that goth rock if it was not for the music video like if i just heard like really the mp3 or whatever you think the music video detracts from it i thought it enhanced the goth feel i think the guy it's all focused on the singer okay i think there's nothing goth about him oh it's in a church I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, listen, I'm not, I'm not saying he needs to be in like full makeup oh, with like long I see. black okay, hair. I see what you're saying. But like, when I think goth rock, I think like Bauhaus oh, okay. and like fucking a lot of new wave, like I guess Depeche I'm Mode, more like the Nine Cure Inch Nails. Kind of goth rock. The, oh, oh, like Almost proto like early new goth New wave stuff. goth rock. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting how a lot of like early goth rock was so bred from new wave. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't well, pick up on a lot of that. It's funny because like, Goth rock is almost at this point in time like a misnomer. It's like there's nothing to me like gothic. Well, about, you know, there's it's just so light. There's sounding. goth rock as a generic sound. Yeah, you know, like sushi and the banshees, and like, uh, um, and there's like verses like the embodiment of a, a mentality of an attitude. No, uh, yeah. And I think it falls more into the latter. Yes, there. Absolutely. It's more of an attitude. It's less of like an aesthetic. Yeah. and a sound. And God, I just, I cannot say enough good things about that song. That was, I was seriously riveted. Ooh. That was fucking sick. I cannot wait to hear more from Glad these guys. Glad you liked it. I am so upset I forgot to bring the vinyl. And I am too. You really I thought that was going to be a Chris. podcast first. I wanted to play the track on vinyl for you. Chris, if you keep dropping the ball with vinyl, we're just going to have to do something about you. We can take you out and put you in a little like cryo-freeze chamber. About to put a hole through this table. Listen, you can't put a hole through the table. We're in our refined era. We have been so put together. There's been less screaming than ever on this podcast. There used to be all it was. The old channel just like... <laughs> just like that. It was just everything. We are so put together now. We can bring it back. No, we, we are grown men podcasters. And I will never want to change that. Except for unmanned danger transpo moments. I think we're getting there. And I think tomorrow is going to be all about that on gameplay videos. See you, Chris! Late at night, in the neon haze, I see you creep in your days. You look the sun.
Bye. Bye.